Hello guys, Free here. Welcome to the channel. If you spend any amount of time working within the Python ecosystem, you're going to come across these three terms. Anaconda, Miniconda, and Conda. If you're new to this space, it could be confusing and not really intuitive in terms of orienting which is which and when to use what. In today's video, we're going to look at these terms, we're going to unpack them, and hopefully you're going to take away understanding what Conda is, what Miniconda is, what Anaconda is, when to use which. Now, if you do a Google search of these terms, a common diagram you might find will look something like this. You might see a diagram that looks something like this. So you have a circle, a concentric circle with Conda in the middle, mini Conda after that, and you might see something like Anaconda, like this. This is a common depiction of what these things are. But to be honest, somebody looking at this for the f very first time is not going to get what this is. And I personally think it's not the accurate representation of what is going on. So what exactly is going on that requires this? Let's step back and unpack this a little bit. If you work with Python, typically you might have your environment here. And I'm using environment very particularly. And your environment is where you write your Python code. So this could be your IDE, this could be your PyCharm, or just your command line or idle, whatever it is you're using to write Python code over here on your machine. So that could be what you use. Now, in the world of programming, a lot of smart people exist. And what they've done is they've written a lot of code. You know, there is that famous saying by, is it Newton or Einstein, one of them, that if I have achieved what I have, is because I walked on the soldier of giant or I stand on the soldier of giant, something like that, something to that effect. Because in programming, you don't always have to reinvent the wheel yourself. If you're going to implement something, maybe someone has already implemented that thing and put it somewhere. So if you're going to write a function that takes a string and does something with it, you can always think, has someone else already does it? And most likely than not, some people have already done it. People are even way smarter than at least myself have done it. And out there in the world, those packages exist. And what are packages? Packages are snippets of code that someone else has already written and it's available out there. And people have done a really good job of packaging it. They put it in this little bundle to say, hey, if you're working with numbers, use this package. If you're working with strings, use this package. So all those packages exist out there. Well, they exist out there, but they don't exist on your machine where you want it to do your work. So how do you go about grabbing those packages and bringing them to your machine so you can do the work you're trying to do? And the challenge we have is on being able to go out there, grab those packages and bring them into the machine. So that package can be available inside of your PyCharm environment, your Jupyter notebook or whatever it is you're working with. And this is where the idea of package manager comes into play in the ecosystem of Python. So you might have a package here, say called, let's just use NumPy as an example, sitting out there, NumPy 1.2, let's just use an example. I don't know the exact ver version name for NumPy, but let's just say NumPy 1.2. And you want NumPy 1.2 to show up within your environment, within your PyCharm ecosystem. So you use a package manager to go out to grab that NumPy 1.2, wherever it exists, somewhere within an index. And it's going to bring that to you. Now, there are a lot of indexes out there that manage packages. As far as Python is concerned, we're talking about Python here in particular. One of them, which you might run into very quickly is, and I'm going to put this in red, is PyPy. 
pi pi stands for and if that's not showing on the screen pi pi stands for python package index so python package index and i think they have a website.org if you go there you can see tons and tons of these packages that folks have written and it's all available in PyPy. You can, if you want, you can actually download it from there and you can bring it and load it into your IDE. The alternative to that, which is another one very popular and common in the space of data science, and we're going to go back to our regular color here, is Anaconda. So Anaconda plays a couple of roles. Number one is a package index very similar to PyPy, uh, but it's very specific and very highly curated. Now, I'm not going to go into the details there, but just kind of understand that when you think of PyPy that has an index of packages, Anaconda has something similar. They have an index of packages. Now, which is bigger, you would find way more packages in PyPy than you would find in, in the Anaconda ecosystem, in the Anaconda package indexer. Uh, PyPy has almost everything there is in, in, in Python. Anaconda has a collection, a curated collection of that. Albeit, it's still a very big collection, but it's a subset of what you will find in PyPy. Now, Anaconda exists out there. If you want to take those packages from anaconda.org, I think it's anaconda.org, it might change. I don't know what the current, the current website is, but anaconda.org, and you want that available down into your local machine so on on this left side then we need a package manager to do that and that's what we start hearing of conda anaconda miniconda and, and all of that so there are really two things that you can install to make this happen the very first one is you're gonna get the mini conda installer so and then here we're gonna get the anaconda installer all right. So, like with any other software, if you want to use that software, you have to install it, right? If you have this Anaconda here, which is this package index, let's just call this package index, and you want that package index, you want to grab things on that package index, well, you need a way to go to that index and grab things. You need a software that would help you to do it. Well, Anaconda provides a software, two installers that you can use to set it up so that you can go into their index and you can grab things from there and make it available in your environment, in your machine. I'm using environment here again. Now, starting with Miniconda, should you use Miniconda or should you use Anaconda and why are they two package, why are they two installers and not just one? Well, it comes down into what you get with each installer. If you choose to use Miniconda installer, and that's really the question. Should you use Miniconda or should you use Anaconda? If you choose to use Miniconda, here's what you get. Number one, if you don't have Python on your local machine, you're going to get a fresh installation of Python. Plus, you're going to get Conda. And this is where Conda comes into play. You're going to get Conda and maybe a subset of core packages. Of core packages. So these are the three things you get. Python. If you don't already have that, or it's going to give you a way to install and manage Python, you're going to get this thing called Conda. I'm going to explain what Conda is. And then you're going to get a subset of core packages, really about maybe hundreds of packages. I don't know the exact number. It might change 150 or so packages that allows you to work. And this is bare minimum. Now, the requirement to install mini Conda, if you have a machine, a lot of people have machines that don't have a lot of space. You don't want a lot of things in there. The requirement to work with Miniconda is about 3 GB. 3 GB or less. If you have less than 3 GB, right, and you don't want to bring a lot of things into your environment, then using a Miniconda installer would give you the bare minimum of what you need so that you can talk to this repository. So let's go back here so that you can talk to this repository. So what is Miniconda going to give you? It's going to give you Python, which is just the big base Python. It's going to give you this thing called Conda. And what is Conda? Conda is this communication channel. Think about Conda as being this middleman that is going to run in between. This link you and this. 
right so think about this as being conda so whenever you say hey i want this package you telling conda hey conda go grab me this package and bring it back to me that's what conda does that's all it does it just sits there in the middle and it goes and it grabs the package and it brings that to you so you need conda to to perform that task go out there grab this package that i want and bring it to me and put it here conda runs out it goes it grabs the package it brings it and gives it to you and put it that's all conda does conda is the package manager is a package manager now going back into where it fits with mini conda so mini conda gives you python it gives you conda because at least you need to talk back and forth as to the package indexer and it gives you a subset of core packages so mini conda might give you let's go back to mini conda let's use mini conda as green mini conda might give you python conda and maybe this package and this package so these two packages very very small mini minimalistic the core it gives you just very specific now if you want other packages what well, you're gonna go out and install it yourself if you want this package you're gonna go out and install it yourself you want this one package you're gonna go out and install it yourself right and how are you gonna do it you're gonna tell conda install this package and then conda will grab that for you so you're gonna use this utility whatever it is you want to call it that you've installed and it can go and bring additional packages for you that's all conda does conda is just a utility now anaconda is it's an installer too that you can choose to install instead of mini conda you can choose to install anaconda the the difference is well you're gonna get the same functionalities that you get with mini conda plus let's make anaconda blue you're gonna get those functionalities so you're gonna get python right you're gonna get conda and and all the, the core packages so conda plus core plus you're gonna get over 1500 i think it's about 1500 plus additional packages 1500 plus more packages so almost the entire thing so you're gonna get almost the entire thing available in the anaconda pan, uh, package indexer all right so in some sense what you've done here is this piece this conda plus this guess what this is mini conda so in installing anaconda you're already getting what mini conda gives you plus this additional set of packages now you might say to yourself well why would somebody why would somebody want to do this so maybe you have a lot of space on your machine greater than 3 gb and you don't care about having all those packages downloaded and sitting on your machine 1500 packages are you really going to use 1500 packages for for your needs for your programming needs sure maybe a lot of people could potentially use 1500 packages right no one is judging you right so if that's the case well grab all of that and make it available on your machine so and essentially what that means is all these packages so not just when you install anaconda anaconda so you think about anaconda when i think of it the snake is i think of massive i think of snakes anaconda is the big snake right so think about it as i want it all i want the big thing so anaconda is going to give you all these packages all of them it's going to download well i think it's all maybe not but i think it's going to just grab all of them and it's going to download it and make it available within your environment and it's going to take a lot of space it might take a lot of time and so whenever you need a new package it's just right there you don't have to you don't have to use conda to go out and grab it anaconda has just brought it all to you and it's available there but guess what it takes a lot of space it takes a lot of space if you have the space fine if you have a small laptop or a phone or whatever it is people use these days then you don't have to bother you don't have to bother at all all right so there you have it that's the difference one of the big differences between mini conda anaconda and conda so just to recap, you know, looking at this concentric circle, I think it, it kind of doesn't really capture it. Conda is a subset of mini conda, it's a subset of anaconda, doesn't really capture it. But hopefully this analogy and explaining it this way has kind of unpacked it for, for, for you a little bit. Conda, think about it as a service. Mini conda is uses that service to go get additional packages anaconda comes to all the packages but if you need even more conda can go grab those 
uh, packages. Here's a good analogy that I'm going to leave you with. And I can't take credit for it. I read it somewhere. I can't quite remember where I read it to give attribution. But it's the analogy of someone having a workshop and you have kind of a, a, a retail warehouse for, for supplies, for tools, a tools warehouse, a tool depot. So you have on this side, you have your workshop at home. This could be your home. And on this side, you have the warehouse with a bunch of tools. So you need tools to, to do your work. You're trying to build maybe a bench. You're trying to build a bench here in your workshop. And you need a saw, you need a hammer, you need some glue, you need a sandpaper, you need a lot of things. Now, there are a couple of things that you can do. You can say, hey, I am going to go out to the hardware store and buy everything that the hardware store has to offer and I'm going to come put it in my house. So you're going to buy everything. So this is everything, right? So all the tools that are available here, which in our case above in the analogy, so going back to the wall of Python, this will refer to packages. So you're going to grab all the packages that are available here and all of that will be available here. This is Anaconda. This is what Anaconda does. It brings all those tools, the saw, the, the hammer, the nails, everything. It brings it down. So as you're working, if you need anything, you just have it right there by you. Miniconda does the same. It doesn't bring everything. It brings a subset. It brings a smaller subset of a few curated packages. Maybe 150. This is about, we're talking about 1500 plus here packages. So Miniconda just brings about 150. Then if you need something, you have to run back to the store and you have to grab that thing and bring it back. Well, who does the running from your house to go to the store and to grab that thing and bring it back? Who does that? If you are sitting in your house and you need a new hammer, you need a new nail, who goes to the store, grabs that thing and says, hey, I'm going to buy a new hammer and I'm going to bring it back to the house. Well, in that case, you can hire like a service boy or a service person to do the work. And that thing would be Conda. Conda is the one that goes out. You say Conda installed this. Conda goes out to the uh, to the hardware store and it grabs the, the tool you need and it brings it back to you. In our case, the tool is a package. It's a, it's a Python package you want to use. All right. So whether you're working with Anaconda or Miniconda, you're still going to use use Conda to interact with, with, it, with it all. And the way you get Conda is by either installing Anaconda or Miniconda using one of those two installers. So I know this is a little bit long, but this is an important uh, topic. Hopefully this clears it out. If somebody's talking about Conda, Anaconda, Miniconda, hopefully this has kind of unpacked it for us a little bit. And uh, even we've touched on, on package indexers and, and all of that. So hopefully this has unpacked. One thing I just want to call out before we wrap up on the video is Conda works with this package index so this package index well this package index by anaconda so anaconda is a is a company i think it was called continuum analytics or so now they call anaconda they manage this website that has this package index like i said earlier there is another package index called pi pi which is even bigger where well the question is you can if you can use conda to go out and grab packages from Anaconda package index. What if you want packages that are not here? Because this is a similar index. You want packages that are in PyPy package index. Can you use Conda to go there and grab it? The answer to that is no, you cannot, right? So Conda will help you when you're grabbing packages from Anaconda. Now, if that package is not in Anaconda, you're not gonna use Conda to install that package. You're gonna have to do it a different way. Okay, and that's where you might be using something like pip install. So you might hear of Anaconda and pip, and this, those are two different package managers. Well, that's the root of it. Now, in a separate video, we're going to talk about the differences between pip and Anaconda. So pip is Python install package or so, I think that's what it is. And then Anaconda, which is a package manager. And in a separate video, I'm going to unpack all of that. So stay tuned for that video. But hopefully, this was helpful to you. Uh, if you do like it, like it, share it with somebody that would 
uh, appreciate this kind of a low level breakdown on some of these topics and the conversation around them. Uh, and as always, uh, this has been true. I will see you in the next uh, presentation.